Hey guys, it's Kevin, and this is going to be another movie review for you guys, and this movie I'm going to be reviewing, I could not wait to see this movie. I'm pretty sure you guys knew what movie I was going to be reviewing. I mean, was it really something I need to tell you guys? I mean, it's pretty obvious. Think of the movies I've been reviewing for classic movies. It was pretty obvious what I was going to be reviewing, but I am so happy to finally review this movie. And this was probably my most anticipated movie for the rest of the summer. Honestly, it was. There was no movie that interested me more than this movie for the rest of the summer. And that movie is Mad Max Fury Road. And I could not tell you guys how much I was looking forward to this movie. Honestly, I couldn't tell you guys. I remember I watched the main trailer. Not really thinking anything of it. I just watched it to see how it was. And I'm like, this is one of the best trailers I've ever seen in my life. Honestly, because... Each trailer showed nothing. Each trailer, they didn't show a lot. They showed things that just got you pumped for the movie. And I love that because that's what a trailer should do. A trailer should never show too much. And I love that the trailers didn't really show anything. It showed breathtaking cinematography and really good, you know, really menacing villain. But that's about it. And I think it was really well done they did that. Because I have to say, Mad Max Fury Road completely surpassed my expectations. After The Road Warrior, I really wasn't sure if anything was going to surpass it. Well, I have to say, this movie surpassed it. <laughs> it totally surpassed it. Mad Max Fury Road is probably the best movie I've seen this year. It surpassed the last five years. Finally, something has surpassed the last five years. And it might be one of the greatest action movies I've ever seen in my life. Honestly, it's an awesome movie. This is the movie of the summer, okay? I don't care what you guys say. I don't think there's going to be a movie that can surpass how epic this one was. There really isn't going to be one. I'm going to talk about why this movie is as good as it is. And after after all the reviews, I was thinking this movie is going to be really overrated and things like that. But no, this movie honestly is just perfect. It's a perfect... This is a perfect movie. It is a complete masterpiece. And I'm going to talk about why I love this movie as much as I do. But first, let's get into the plot of this movie. Because the plot of this movie, honestly, is pretty awesome. I love the plot of this movie. Because basically at this point, Max has completely lost hope. He is haunted now by the demons of his wife and uh, daughter constantly, you know, basically listening to them. He's pretty much just given hope on humanity and everything. He really has just lost all sense of what really, uh, really, he really just has lost all sense of hope and everything. And he's trying to get that hope back and everything. And at this point, everyone's losing hope because the world is now run by this really evil, I'm going to say he's a dictator, in Morton Joe, who most people look at as a religious figure, mostly because they're so terrified of him. And he has these, like, wives, basically, that uh, he wants to breed. And he just is doing some crazy shit. And there's this, and one of the people that he's holding captive that was working with him, Furiosa, actually ends up fleeing with the five wives to basically protect them and take them back to her homeland and meanwhile max is prison is a prisoner of uh immortan joe and he has to basically choose what side is he on does he want to ally with immortan joe and respect him or does he want to go with furios and put a stop to this apocalypse finally maybe finally show that there is some hope in the world that's basically a plot of mad max fury road i love the plot i think it's awesome and that's one of the reasons why i love the movie as much as i do but that's only one of the few reasons why i love this movie as much as i do the plot is awesome but the thing that makes this movie so so good is everything else besides the plot honestly let's first get to the acting this movie because the acting this movie is just so next level everything this movie is just so next level i'm going to talk about why but first we have to get to tom hardy as mad max um let me just say that mel gibson he gave a great performance of mad max in the road warrior and he was amazing in that movie but tom hardy what I love about his portrayal of Max is that he is a very scared character. You see that he's kind of scared. He's a badass, definitely, but he's worried about what's going to happen in the world. And you see that he, one of the things I love is that he's haunted by his past constantly. And he really doesn't know what to do. And I love his character because most of the movie, he is in danger the whole movie. There's not one scene in this movie where he's not in some sort of danger. And I love that about his character. And he was a very flawed hero as well, which I thought was really good, but you definitely saw him be a hero, and what a lot of people are saying is that he's not as much of a badass as Charlie Theron. I thought he still had some really big standout scenes, I thought he was amazing in this movie, he was just awesome, honestly, especially toward the third half of this movie, oh my god, he was awesome, and everyone fears him as well, like, anytime they come up to him, they fear him, and I loved his character, I thought he was just amazing in it, honestly, he was great. However, Charlie Theron's character, Furiosa, is the star of this movie. I'm going to tell you guys why. Let's look at the Mad Max movies. 
they do not have characters that you root for besides Mad Max. So the Road Warrior, while I love that movie, there is really no other character that you want to root for besides Max. This movie took that to a whole other level by introducing Furiosa, who I think is definitely, as I said, the star of this movie. Charlize Theron, this is by far Charlize Theron's best performance. Her character is amazing. When you realize why she wants to go back to her homeland and how her homeland has been destroyed by this evil, evil man, evil dictator, it is amazing to watch. I think she did. She had such a range of this movie as well. She really got into this character. She was so dedicated in this movie, and I just absolutely loved everything she did in this movie. She was absolutely amazing, I have to say. She did an amazing job, and just, she was just, she was such a badass as well. I love that she did whatever she could to get these five wives to her homeland. She also fought off Max. I mean, she has so many standout scenes, and she was just awesome in this movie. I loved her character. I thought she did an amazing job, and she was really the star of this movie. She was fantastic. The other character I loved was Nicholas Holt's character, Nux. Now, Nux is also someone that I knew that they've introduced to the movie because he actually is working with Joe in the beginning of the movie. He, on... Uh, it seems like he was going to be on Joe's side, but he realizes what Joe is doing is really bad. He doesn't want to put up with it anymore, so he ends up working with Furiosa, and I love that he did end up going with Furiosa, and I think Nicholas Hulk gave another amazing performance, because his character is really good as well. He really wants to do something about this apocalypse, and he wants to do something meaningful, and I loved his, uh, I mean, I really liked his also, um, his little subplot with one of the five wives because they really motivate him to get him to show what he should really do in this world, and that he really should do something about what's going on in this apocalypse. I think it was really well done that he did that, and I absolutely love that. I thought that was just the perfect character, honestly. He was perfect in the movie. He was great, and he really added some really good heart to the movie, I have to say, as well. Also, Charlize Theron had some really great standout scenes. She had one scene that had me on the verge of tears. I mean, there are scenes in this movie that are devastating, honestly, and it's because of how good the actors are. And there are only a few other people I want to talk about, but first of all, we have to talk about Hugh Key's burn as Immortan Joe. Oh my god, guys. When you look at this guy, this was the toe cutter in the first Mad Max. The most defenseless pussy villain I've ever seen in my life, who was a scared of women, and here he is like the dominator and controlling women, and he is legitimately terrifying. Like, in the trailers, he scared me, and I love about his characters. His, his character is so terrifying. The reason why nobody wants to put a stop to it is because they're terrified of him. I mean, just look at him. He's terrifying. He's so powerful, and he you, they just don't really want to do anything about him, and I loved his character. And he's not in the movie as much as you think, but when he is in the movie, it's really powerful, and you, once the second he comes on screen, you, you're feared of him, you want him dead, and I love about his character. By far the best villain in the Mad Max series. Yes, he is better than the Humongous, because the thing I like more about his character is that he has a reason for them, you know, he has, he has more of a reason for Max to go after them, other than just he is bigger than him, because that's really what the thing the Robe War was, that he was a bigger villain, and that's why Max wasn't sure if he could take him down. Here, it's a lot more than that, and I thought it was amazing what they did there, and I love what they ended up doing with uh, his character. I thought that he was just such a crazy villain, I have to say. He was a crazy villain, and he did an amazing job. Um, I guess the only characters to talk about, the five wives, whoever played them, they all did a really good job. I like their characters as well. You really cared about their characters. You wanted them all to survive. You wanted um, Furiosa to get them to their home, get, her, get them to her homeland. I thought they were really good as well. Definitely. Everyone in this movie was great. All the acting was great, and they were all very, very good. Next, we have to talk about the directing by George Miller, which the directing here was amazing. I thought the directing by George Miller was absolutely fantastic. I loved the directing he went with here because he knew that he had to step it up. It's 2015. It's no longer the 1980s. You have to step up your directing. He took everything to the next level because he went these. He turned these movies from being fun action movies and turned them into survival movies. This is a survival movie. This is a movie about redemption. It's about survival. It's about a lot of big things, about being a hero. It's about should I get involved in this? And I loved those messages that George Miller had. You can definitely tell that he wanted to, can, and I love that he wasn't one of those directors that's like, fuck it, you know what? I'm good at these movies. I'm just going to go ahead. No, he stayed extremely dedicated to this. You can tell that his directing would not have made this movie half as good as it was, and he did an amazing job directing it, and he his directing was just 
awesome. I loved it. Honestly, his directing was so good in this movie. The screenplay as well is also amazing. Honestly, the screenplay is so good. It has so many dramatic moments. A lot of people are saying this movie is a two-hour action scene. It's not at all. There are so many times when the movie slows down so we can get to know these characters better, and I love that they did that because... The other, this, this movie is the longest movie in the Mad Max franchise, and it honestly had to be because the characters were introduced to it, and I love the writing here, because it's such depressing writing, honestly. The tone is so bleak and depressing and unhappy, and there's not, there's not many moments of happiness in this movie, and I love the writing here. It's very depressing, it's very dark stuff, and it definitely is very hard to watch at times. Honestly, there are scenes in this movie that are very hard to watch. That's because of how strong the writing is and how good it was, really. The writing was so good, and I thought it was honestly fantastic. I love the writing. However, the cinematography to this movie might be some of the best cinematography I've ever seen in my life, honestly. It's so stylized. The sets in this movie, first of all, were incredible. It looked like post-apocalyptic world. It looked amazing, and it looked like no place I'd ever want to be. It literally looked like a desert. They were in a desert the whole movie. And the thing I love about the cinematography is just the way the action sequences are filmed. They were all practical. There was no effects with the, with the cinematography. It was all practical, and I loved it. Everything was practical, and there's so many awesome things about the cinematography. The action scenes are mind-blowingly so epic. They go on for like 20 minutes, but you're so into them. And it's not like Transformers either. It's not like Transformers where it's like, brruh, like it's just it's just rushing it. No, it's it had to be as long as it was. Honestly, these action scenes had to be long because it's the future. It's crazy now. Not a lot of people give a shit anymore, really. There are crazy people in the world. We had to show that. This action scenes had to be crazy, and that's why cinematography was as amazing as it is. There are amazing shots of, like, cars blowing up. There are shots of, uh, just guns, like, flying everywhere. There's a shot of a guy on a guitar and, like, fire flames are shooting out. It's awesome. I loved how they incorporated, like, the drums and the guitar with the score. I thought that was awesome as well. The cinematography is just beautiful and it was one of the best parts of the movie by far. I loved it. The editing was perfect as well. The movie really flew by. It did not feel like two hours at all. I was into it the entire time. And finally, the score. This movie needs to get nominated for Best Score at the Oscars. I'm sorry. This is one of the most epic scores I've heard in a very long time. Just the score influences the tension of the movie so well. If you buy the song Escape... Um, if you buy that on iTunes and then put it on your phone, you can just feel the tension in the movie just building up as a score plays, and I love that, because the louder the score gets, the more tension builds up, and the crazier the movie gets, and I thought that was awesome the way they did that. I didn't expect them to do that with the score, but it was definitely something that was greatly appreciated, and I absolutely loved that, and I thought that was awesome. Definitely something I loved about the movie was the score. It was an awesome score, and I thought it was amazingly done, and I absolutely loved the score. It was a very, very good. Definitely loved it. So, overall, everything about this movie is amazing, and now we get to spoilers for Mad Max Fury Road, because this is a movie where you have to talk about spoilers. If you guys have not seen Mad Max Fury Road, do not watch the rest of the review. Seriously. Go in blind, okay? If you've seen the trailers, you're good. I don't want you guys to know much more about this movie. I really don't. So there's a lot that happens in, this, in the last half of this movie that's really awesome that I want to talk about, but if you guys have not seen this movie, don't watch the rest of the review. Seriously. Also, see the movie, because a lot of people weren't in my theater, and that really got me worried, because I really hope the movie isn't, uh, you know, like, Edge of Tomorrow, where nobody sees it. I really hope that does happen. Now, the reason I'm only saying this is because most of the people in my theater were going to see Pitch Perfect 2, so I really hope that doesn't happen again, so definitely see this movie because it was, it, it's, it's just amazing, and it's honestly is a game-changing action movie. It really has changed action movies, and I'd love to see more action movies done this way. Something, something else I love about this movie, by the way, was how personal it was. It really was a, it really was, as much as it was an action movie, it was also a character piece, really it was, because we got to know each character so well, and they were each fleshed out so well, and they each had their equal amount of all of scenes and heartbreak and screen time. I thought that was really well done the way they did that. Very well, they were all very well developed and you cared about each and every one of them and you wanted all of them to survive and I thought that was awesome that they did that. So now I'm going to get to spoilers from Mad Max Fury Road and let's just get into it. The first thing, of course, I want to talk about is a scene where Furiosa comes back to her hometown and she realizes that 
what used to be her hometown, the Green Place, it's now destroyed, and when she broke down, I felt so bad for her character. I mean, she's such a wounded character. She already lost an arm, you know, she was just going through so much shit in this movie, and I felt so bad for that scene. That's why Char that is when I realized that that was Charlize Theron's best performance. Honestly, the moment that she started breaking down, she just, I felt so bad for her, and I thought they did a great job with that scene. I have to say that was awesome. Also, something else I forgot to say, the opening scene this movie is truly epic, I have to say. It's truly epic. It was the perfect way to reintroduce us to the Mad Max character. If you guys haven't seen the other Mad Max movies, you're fine. Go, You don't have to see the other Mad Max movies to see this movie because they perfectly introduce you to Max's character, which is something I loved. And something that George Miller thought, he thought, you know what, this, this series is like 40 years old. This series is like 20 years old. No one's going to remember it, so why don't I just reintroduce them to the character, which I thought was really good. I love that they did that. So, the biggest part of this movie, though, is when Max killed, Immor when Furiosa killed Immortan Joe and literally tore his face off. I was like, that is one of the almost awesome kills I have ever seen. Honestly, that was so awesome when she's like, remember me? And then just hooks his face off. That was so awesome. And the fact that she took him down, I mean, I can understand if someone's like, well, it was that easy. Why did she do that? Because no one else wanted to do it because they were so scared of him. But they did it, but she did it because she could. She finally realized, that, you know what? I can kill him. I can do it. I'll kill him. And she did it. She killed him. I love that she did it. And it was such an awesome way to end her, st to end that story. I thought it was perfect. And we really came full circle with her character. And the way it ended it, I was just so happy with the way that was done. That was honestly awesome. And I loved it. And then when Nux sacrificed himself, I cried, honestly. I was on the verge of crying. I got teary-eyed when he decided to sacrifice himself, and we knew why, because he wanted to be a hero, and he knew that that was what his personal vendetta was, because he was having that conversation, of course, in one of the five wives about how he needs to be a hero, and that's what he was meant to do. So that's why he sacrificed himself, because he wanted to show that he was a hero, and he wasn't on Joe's side. And he realized that if he wanted to live, he had to sacrifice himself. It was very hard to watch, but it was an amazing scene, and I thought they did an amazing job with his death. It was amazingly done. I absolutely loved the way they ended it. Honestly, it was perfect. And then the end of the movie, where basically Furios and the wives and Max are cheered by uh, the war boys and all the people that are working for Joe, you see their hatred for Joe finally come out. Because now that Joe's dead, they can't, you know, they don't have to be afraid of him anymore because he's gone. And they realize how much how much of a terrible person he really was. And they look at these people like heroes now. Furiosa now gets to be the hero she's always wanted to be. She has to have the life she's wanted. She doesn't have to worry about living in this the movie, honestly, the end of the movie, what I love is that it provides you a sense of hope. It really does. And it really makes you think that there is going to be some hope for this apocalypse. And I think that's really cool the way they do that. And I like that Max flees um, the scene to go out on his own because he does go out on his own. Even though he needs these people, he always has to go on a new mission because he needs to make sure the rest of the world is as safe as they are. Because honestly, they're safe now. Their dictator's gone. They can now have a much more calm life and it really provides you with a sense of hope. When the water came down, I thought that was awesome and I thought that was very well done. Something I absolutely love about the movie and I thought it was just an amazing, a perfect way to end the movie. Awesome. It was a perfect way and I loved it. So overall, guys, Mad Max Fury Road is truly one of the best action movies I have ever seen. It is so much more than an action movie. It's definitely more of a survival movie. It really is. It's so much more of a thriller than it is an action movie. It has edge-of-your-seat scenes. You are not prepared for this movie. Honestly, I was not prepared for how amazing this movie was going to be. I was not prepared for how into this movie I was. There was not one scene where I was like, wrap this up, wrap this up. No, this movie was just perfect, honestly. It was perfect. It was amazing. And I had no problems with it. It it is perfect. It is the I can't think of a movie this summer that can be better than this. Honestly, I thought of movies this summer. There's no movie that I think is going to be as good as Mad Max Fury Road. Okay, honestly, there really isn't. Um, the only movie I could think of is like Mission Impossible. That's even not going to be as good as it. Honestly, I know it's not going to be. So overall, Mad Max Fury Road, solid A plus, definitely best movie of the franchise. It is. By far, kicked the Road Warrior's ass. Road Warrior is still a great movie, but this movie was so much better than Road Warrior. See this movie. If you guys don't see this movie, you are missing out on the best movie this summer. Don't even see any other movie this summer, honestly. Don't see another movie this summer. See this movie, and you're good. This is the movie you need to see this summer, because if you don't see this movie this summer, you're going to miss out on the best movie of the summer, one of the best experiences of the movies you have. And you have to see this movie in theaters. Don't watch this movie on some cheap cam quality link. This movie is, the sound's awesome. You guys are going to love it. Unless you don't like uh, big, weird movies, because 
I can I can totally see if someone's like, oh, this movie was weird. I didn't like it. It was all over the place. There was too much action. If you guys don't like crazy movies, don't watch this. Honestly, don't watch it. It's depressing. It's sad. It's crazy. It's awesome. It's a lot of different things. And I thought it's all just an amazing movie. Honestly, if you guys love the first two Mad Max movies, you'll love this one. If you hated the first two Max movies, you're not going to like this one. There's nothing in this that I think is different from the first one. There are It's all very different from the first one, but it's the same tone as the first two. If you guys don't like the first two, you're not going to like this one. It's that simple. So overall, guys, highly recommend you guys see this movie. Please see this movie. It's the best movie of the year. I absolutely love Mad Max Fury Road. I can't believe how much I loved it. A plus, 10 out of 10 by far. Five, I mean, 5 out of 5. Absolutely loved it. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Let me know what you guys saw this movie. You have seen it, which please, please see it. Um, I will see you guys in the next video, which we're going to review for Girl Meets World. So I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.